And here we go. This is Flash Somebody at in a perfect world on reallibertymedia.com tonight on the 10th day of March 2020 for the calendar watchers. Hey, Grim even numbers his shows. I named mine. <laughs> and tonight's episode is entitled uh, Never Let a Good Crisis Go to Waste. And going to say hey to the bots in the body. The traditional hellos must be made for the good <laughs> of society. <laughs> and we, hey, thanks a lot, Grim, for uh, all the stuff you always end up doing. And we've got for the chatters tonight in the bots and bodies department, we've got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech. And uh, Beetle's been having a little illness, I think, from reading what he's been putting in. So I hope Beetle starts to feel better. And uh, Grimnir and Moose Girl, Kate, and Ty, Asmo, Chelsea, Vinny, Circle, hey, honey, Dan, Van, Meter, Duh, Me, Frumpy, Java Doctor, Two, Woody, Meister Brow, uh, Prince, Rob Works, Trust, No One, Vanna White, Wed Dork, The Phantom, Bruce Dickinson, Chaskura, Cyborg Moodle, E-Man in the Civ, Frumpy Work, Guest 67014, I Am Lone Frog, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, Salt Lake City, Mike A, Mikey, Smart Ass, The Holiest, Roger, and Zubik. And I've got a great title for the show, but uh, I don't know. We're all going to die of the coronavirus. <laughs> hide, hide under a rock. <laughs> Get some protection. You know, body condoms. Load up on that sanitary shit so that. Well, the way I look at this, right? I got shit living on my skin already. And all that bacterial shit, well, that would disturb all that good shit that I got living on my skin. <laughs> and I don't want to fuck with the flow now. Things been working pretty good for a while. <laughs> it's like eight, eight years straight. So why would I go about taking the advice <laughs> of the very people that I see as the ones trying to make a living off of me being ill. So so here we are, stuck with the coronavirus. <laughs> and whether it's real or not, or true or not, this is, this is how this is going to work. Because people have been trying to figure out ways to enslave each other for a long, long time. And it's been working pretty good, covertly. It's not like everybody's aware of what a slave they truly are. But now with this electronic shit <laughs> and a little help from uh, medicine <laughs> and a cure, well, we've got exactly what we need to be totally controlled. The list of things that's not going to be illegal is going to be very small. <laughs> I don't think anything that we do is going to not be illegal somewhere <laughs> in a perfect world, man. That's where, that's where we are. So, And we've got links, links, and links, and links. Not a lot of opposition to this particular virus. <laughs> but I've been through this before. Many times in you know, my life, the end of the world was nay. Coming right around the corner. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't skip you. You'll be part of the festivities. And here I am, all these years later, still dying of the same shit, just with a different name. <laughs> so maybe Larry Woods and Robert Wright. And all this crap that we're physically dealing with. 
is really a result of all that electrical wavelength shit they're doing. That we're doing. We participate in it with the internet, cell phones, traveling, <laughs> commerce. They got us every, you know, every possible way there is to be had. We've been had. And we willingly went along with it because it was easy. Hmm. And now, the system has finally figured out a way to control the movement of a globe. <laughs> They're going to control trade. They're going to control every freaking thing that we do physically with our consent because we don't want to die of the coronavirus. Just like all these zombie movies have been showing for years and years and years. <laughs> it's just, this is like a, a non-violent version of the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> you know, and we're all going to be living in lockdown, quarantined, and if you're over 60, you fucked. <laughs> the doctors don't want to see you. <laughs> you can't be saved. <laughs> so... I know I'm laughing through all this shit. Usually that would be kind of like, I'd be like having a, a nervous kind of. <laughs> now this is funny. I'm actually uh, amused. Even if it's true, it, it doesn't, at 60 years old, you know, when you've done this over and over, it's like they were all drills for this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what it was. You know, all these uh, Jew productions about you know, the zombie apocalypse coming and devastating us. We're out on the wasteland scavenging for brains to eat. <laughs> well, that's what they're making happen right in front of me. I'm watching this. This is how I'm seeing it. The jackboot has just stepped on the face. It hasn't stepped on my face just yet, but it's in... It's in the vicinity. It's closing in. Denmark's getting shit down. <laughs> You're not going to be able to go to Denmark. <laughs> oh, you poor tourists. What you are going to be missing? But they said it couldn't be done. You can't control all of the people all of the time. But apparently... They're going <laughs> to, and we're going to go, sure, because yeah. there's not enough test kits available to make sure you're not ill of this virus. This virus may get you, and you won't even have symptoms, but you could be passing it around. <laughs> I mean, is there a better story? than This is like three-card Monty plus. You can't disprove it, and you can't prove it. But there's links of all these people in hospitals all over the planet. But I've been watching links of people in hospitals all over the planet for a decade. <laughs> Nothing changed. <laughs> Let's see what... The, I'm going to try to do a chat. I'll do an hour tonight with this craziness going on, because I'm the minority again, I'm not saying it's not happening. It probably is. But there's other ways. There's other ways to explain things than what really happened. And we've been victim of that for a long time through press and the media. You know? Well, they're showing you the link. Okay, well, film can be manipulated or redistributed in ways that are biased and you look at them in a certain light because that's what you are told to do <laughs> and we're like that i'm like that some areas just not too many i usually don't go crazy except for maybe when uh they want to legalize weed hey sweetie you can have it it's, a, it's your candy bar <laughs> the wife came down to snatch your candy bar off the desk anyway big excitement in denmark they're locking us all down. So now, Cirque for Cirque, 
She has to work from home. <laughs> she doesn't have to take the train to go in tomorrow. <laughs> because, you know, it's for the safety of others. <clears throat> hmm. But this is so reminiscent of the nuclear and the way they always discuss that. Well, you can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't hear it, but we know it's there. <laughs> Our meters prove, yeah, yeah, well, we're living in this, like, biological experiment. They call it, or, <laughs> it's not, it, it's a bad joke now. And we go along with the, just the damn stupidest shit. Out of mainly because if you go against it, the other people call you names and won't talk to you. But, as it seems to turn out, <laughs> some of these here conspiracy theories as us, over the time have turned out to be pretty close to the truth. <laughs> anyway. Well, duh, that's all right, because I'm not doing a anything in particular show. I, well, I didn't get a co-hostage, so turn it off, and uh, don't let don't let the bed bugs bite, because sometimes I think I just hit a pipe, and maybe my mind will go somewhere. But I've been through this the end of the world crisis crap so many times since you know, what fifty years of sixty of it that. I'm not really convinced that this is as bad as the system wants us to believe it is. Because they've always done snaky shit like they got away with 9-11. Nobody knows who did 9-11. Because if you say it was the Jews, the first thing that happens is somebody argues, no, it could have been the Jews, they're our allies, blah, 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 blah. But we're living in this uh, fucked up world where... <laughs> The best story, see, Doug was looking maybe for a good story tonight, but I didn't look for nothing. I figured, you know, this is my opinion about some random shit during the end of the world. <laughs> That's what you know. It. The world is going to end soon. Maybe not for you, but probably for people you know. I don't know anybody so far that has contact with me that's been a victim of this horrible coronavirus but then again I don't I have never personally known of a, a, a random violence murder victim it's always stuff I read great books great stories great films but in my personal reality no I miss all the good shit very boring life you know when uh, when I look <laughs> When I look at the internet and see all the fun I could be having, and then I look at what I'm doing. Hey, Rob, you want to come bullshit for a, uh, about 45, and we'll call it a call it a show at an hour. I got wire open if you're interested. I didn't have anything particular in mind tonight, so I went with uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. And we're always living in some fucking form of crisis. <laughs> Everybody's scared to death of everybody now. You could have the virus, the bug. I remember watching TV and similar you know, mentalities you know, about having like a, in the wire it was AIDS because they were shooting heroin. And if you got the bug, well, it's going to be in some pretty bad condition. And here we are looking at the internet feeding us all these statistics about people dying from something that, well, at first it was similar to flu. Now, but no, 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 we were wrong. <laughs> it's, it's way worse. What we have here is a pandemic. Now, never mind all the regular shit that people die from. See, It's like all, all that doesn't happen anymore because all their attention is on this virus that could kill people. Never mind all the shit that is killing people. It's, hmm. So, whether you understand what I'm talking about, or you like it or not, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Do your own radio show. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a listen. 
because, uh, well, when it's not scripted and there's no, no radio partner, it gets a little weird. And then I decided to fill up the pipe and see what would happen. Because in a perfect world, I think if I was a bad guy, I could find a lot of ways to capitalize off this coronavirus. And when you think about life in terms of profit and loss, <laughs> you know, in my opinion, not everybody else. Everybody else seems to love that finance game. But me, eh, not so much. I did once when I was young. But it lost its appeal. I don't know why. Things, shiny things aren't always uh, what they seem to be, I think. It's, it's a personal lesson. Because we all learn our shit different ways from different sources. I think so tonight. I'm just going to have a toke on the pipe. And try to figure out how to solve the problems of the known world. And I think I've got it figured out. And if, if you want to try it to prove me wrong, I, I dare you to try it. There's only three things you got to do. First thing, I have to change the way I explain it. But don't accept the lie as, a, as the truth. You know, Fight that shit. And don't kill people. And then grow hemp and cannabis like you know what you're doing. But we have these things called laws in the way of progress. You know, they're slowing us down really, really bad. And then now they got this coronavirus scare. That's going to shut down physical communication. Who controlled? Wow, to a level that I, I think the greatest... Um, control freaks of history never thought of this. Or maybe they had they thought of it. But without the computer, there was no real way to make this work all in like a week. <laughs> hey, let's scare the shit out of everybody all at once. Because, as you all know, we live on emotion. There's two emotions. And all of the other emotions that we have are based off the two other emotions. And those emotions are called, for your reading perusal, fear and love. Period. And everything else is branched off one of the two. Fear is narrow and, <coughs> and uh, skinny thin, can't get much through it, but love is wide and vast, and you can have a lot of motion and activity. So, where are we best managed? You know, keep us afraid, and that's what this virus is doing. It's got Zerk nerves. <clears throat> I don't blame her. You know, shit, I'm 60, so I'm in the don't help. <laughs> don't help this old geezer group, you know. And that's it. But I don't really want medical people to uh, assist me anyway. I mean, look, I think I've done better in the last eight years than I did the previous eight because getting away from that medical shit. And I find that amusing because all this crap we always hear about people being drug addicts. Oh, don't be a drug addict and be all on drugs. And then what happens? They go to the doctor and get prescription medicine from a qualified practitioner of drugs. Huh. Hmm. Who knew? And I'm trying to type some notes while I'm chatting. That's going to be fun. Um. Well, maybe I'll add a word. Maybe it'll read better that way. So, let's see. I was listening to Grim Leftovers. And I think that isolation, you know, isolationist, the push that. I just see it as another form of controlling the public. You know, and 
keeping them afraid. And what I've read is mostly the people that are succumbing to the coronavirus, well, they all seem to be my age and older. So I would assume, you know, if you're already ill, feeling like shit, you get this on top of it. That makes sense. But hmm, I don't feel ill. I've had this little lingering cold for a week or so, but eh, it hasn't, you know, I haven't felt like, oh, I can't move. I need a doctor. Help, help, help. But I think if I ever did, I'd, I'd say something. <laughs> I wouldn't keep that a secret. <laughs> how do you, how do you keep that a secret in the first place? But according to the internet webs at this point in time, right now, people are passing this horrible virus around like, like it's cool. Hmm. So, what if it's being exaggerated? Who oh, no. knows? Other deaths are being attributed to it to you know keep fuel in the fire. Because I do not trust sources of information that we get as a collective. It's so far, I mean, hey, we're looking at uh, a rerun of Trump and Biden for the White House. So, I mean, if it doesn't get any more ridiculous politically than that, then, I mean, it's the same old shit over and over and over. I think this virus would be a blessing and people would go, well, I've had enough any fucking way. <laughs> now they're out hoard buying. They called it hoard purchasing. Because they're going to have plenty and fuck the other guy. <clears throat> well... I don't know what my opinion truly is on that. I don't. I don't foresee the locals here becoming slaves to uh, fear mongering at that level, because you know these people have known each other their whole life. So you know they're they're, they're like family to each other in a different way than anything I've seen before. And I don't. Uh, I don't think that the, this culture is going to be so easily manipulated to do to do the little dances that we do to go to the store and buy shit thing and uh, keep you know to keep the purchasing going because hmm. if they're going to have problems like this keeping us separate and they're going to start dissuading us from spending currency well aren't they the people that are making money aren't they taking a loss by discouraging you from spending money I'm a little bit confused in this I mean maybe there's a an imminent collapse and this is the perfect distraction from all the supply lines being shut off all at one time you know, you're not getting it local you're not getting it <laughs> that would be a kick in the nuts wouldn't it I'll call that a kick in the nuts but what would you call it I don't think it's out of the uh, possibilities. Now, Trumpster, he's not getting good press through this um, coronavirus tragedy. People are claiming he's not taking this threat very seriously. Hmm. Now, I'm not a follower of Trump. I don't really know, but I have, like, I, I do this site called minds.com I like to read their little bit of stuff there's not so much of it that it takes all day you can go through it in a few minutes sometimes or I can see what I like I find a lot of interesting things on it because of course as you all know I boycotted uh, Facebook <laughs> that did me a lot of good I don't do Twitter unless through other people by association, but I don't initiate any of that. This is not about uh, being important or dig me, I'm cool. This is just, I got a chance to learn how to do radio and leave a bunch of crazy messages behind. Because someday in the future, maybe this will be picked up, some kid will go, hey, I wonder what's in this box of old weird shit. I did that when I was young. Look at me now. <laughs> So, I don't know. 
I guess I'm going to spend the rest of the hour worrying, sitting here shaking in my bones, you know, I'm going to get sick from the coronavirus. And if I do that long enough, it'll happen. And I might not even get the coronavirus. I might get hit by a bus or, you know, shot by the police in a mistaken identity situation at a bank. Something like that could happen. I, Because I believe, not everybody else believes this shit, but I do, that you bring on your own shit. So if you're having shit, you had something to do with the shit. And there's, I don't know what you'd call them, extenuating circumstances. But when you depend on other people for a diagnosis, you're not the one that's supposed to explain to them what they need to do to diagnose you. But unfortunately, that's... Hmm. The doctor that I saw last in America that I felt I had to go see him, he said to me that I was an enigma. <laughs> so that kind of took a shit on all his medical knowledge. And I thought, wait a minute. Just like everybody else, we're all built the same, you freaking dumbass. But I'm different somehow. Maybe he just couldn't understand what my charts meant. <laughs> There's so many ways you can take uh, an insult like that. Hmm. But it did do is, is it opened that doorway of doubt to the medical establishment so that by the time the opportunity came for me to walk away from it, I took the chance and went, fuck it. <laughs> what, it what, could, what could be worse? You know, Being poisoned by a freaking pill that I'm taking or taking the chance that not taking it is the answer. So, and then people said, yeah, you're just an idiot. You're a lucky idiot, but you're just an idiot because you won't seek medical professionals. Mm. Then I have to remind myself when I hear that from other folks, I haven't been ill since I left the care of medical professionals. So here I am at 60 years old, right? And I've got to decide if I'm going to be bullied and belittled by the threat of the coronavirus. Because the way I look at life, I think that part of it's my choice. You know, Because if you don't believe in things, and there's a lot of physical things that this covers, if you think it through deep enough, you're in a great amount of control of your life. I am. And I attribute it to having been around for so long and having so little mishap along the way. Because some people have suffered horrible accidents. I had a neighbor that lost both his legs from the knee down. So I've seen tragedy. You know, he got paid off by the military. It was in a truck accident, actually. Nothing military about it. But uh cost him his legs. So, I look at my life and nothing's been that expensive. You know, I've lost a few friends. <laughs> I've lost a couple of countries. But, uh, hmm. I'm physically intact. Now, my mental state gets challenged occasionally. People call me a fucking nut and such whatnot. But, you know, differing opinions bring that on. You know? So... We got to learn about us. And I don't think that uh, I'm that egotistical. And I'm pretty fucking egotistical. But I don't know if I'm so egotistical that I want to learn about me. <laughs> then I met Miss Mary. And she had some wacky doodle ideas. I'm telling you. She's got these oils, wacky oils that, you know, like if you got a headache coming on, and you've got a little vial about this, about an inch and a half tall. It's a tiny little bottle. you got a little headache starting to nod your back of your head. And you take a drop of this freaking oil and rub it on your neck. The headache will go away. I've done this twice. Went, wow. But I got to admit, when I first heard it, I was so into what I knew, because I've grown up in the modern world, that I didn't. But I believed her, so that helped. 
you know, because I didn't think my friend Mary would mislead me somewhere. I just thought the, the information was wacky because I'd never boil to make a headache go away. You take aspirin, you freaking wacko. <laughs> then after that, you know, I've learned ma many things like what aspirin is. <laughs> Don't take any of this stuff. Any of these uh, over-the-counter pharmaceuticals are just as damn dangerous as the behind-the-counter pharmaceuticals. If you know how to mix this crap together, too, that's another thing. Whew. If you ever got a hold of a pharmacology book, went shopping at Walmart, you know what I'm talking about. I have a friend that did that. I didn't participate in the powders and pills they were creating, but I did hear all the stories about it after. And it was, wow. I was luckily at ops on one of my little journeys going off somewhere. And by the time I got back, that crap was all over with. But, whoa, people won't do for entertainment. You know, in this <laughs> drug addicts, I guess we would be called, you know, people that try things that they're not supposed to try because the law said so. Well, I wondered about all that when I was growing up. Wait a minute. That got this poison under the sink. <laughs> it's got skull and crossbones on it, so you know, because your mom and dad told you, don't play under there with all the chemicals and shit. You'll get killed, you dumbass. So you don't do that. Well, now they've got pretty bottles of Roundup and People take them out and squirt them on their freaking weeds out in the yard. And to me, that's not much different than <laughs> messing around with poison. But to the to the other guy, his level of information stopped at bug spray. Didn't ever think about what could this do to me. <laughs> and I think me and Vinny had gone round and round about my opinion on the olden days. And my opinion is based on different information. You know, uh, oh, but the people in the time, they had such a hard life. And I equated that in my mind to money. All poor people have a hard life. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I was talking about, and what I still try to bring up every now and again is, Suffering is relative to the time you're in. So, we're suffering in ways that are hidden from us, like the source of our electricity is on a wrong, it's on a bad frequency for us, creates waste. The food that we get has got poisons and this and that, all these additives to it to bring it to you. So, you, you know, you get these problems along with the, with the answers. And I don't think any of it was necessary from the beginning that they would have used hemp. Hmm. Not that bugs would go away, because bugs are going to be there. It would be more... Uh, hmm. There's natural ways to <coughs> fight insects, like uh, diatomaceous earth. So the pesticide thing, all this site strikes me as a big scam, as a way to, to get us willing to take poisons into our system and build it. We'll build up an immunity to it, like cockroach, and you know our offspring, blah 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 blah, and so on. But it, as long as we're kept weak physically and sick, these people have control over us. Now they got the virus to just nail the coffin lid shut. We won't be able to do anything. I thought that ID upgrade was bad. When you, know, you can't fly domestic without a special ID now. They made that a law like a year ago. Got enacted here recently. So I thought that was pretty bad. And I went, wow, this coronavirus thing. They got suits so that you can be separate from people in public. <laughs> people are all masking up and plasticking and doing all kinds of crazy shit. Apparently, uh, pictures on the internet. Hmm. But I've read books, and according to the information that I read about this here particular little bug, the masks 
will keep out things that are a lot bigger than the bug, but not the bug. The bug kill is so small, it'll get right through the, the mask. <laughs> and yet people are still out there buying masks to prevent a illness that the mask is not designed to prevent. Mm. So, I don't know, maybe uh, when we do talk to Larry on Thursday, we're going to do another show with Larry Woods and Rob Works Thursday night. If you guys want to catch up on, uh, Larry's going to do a little defining if I'm correct. But here, I'll write that down. Larry Woods and Rob um, are going to do a little explaining on Thursday night. At the, I guess, the normal time. I'll do it at 9 o'clock. At, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll just figure it, out, figure it out when it happens. I have no idea. I like to do these things kind of uh, on the spur, spur of the moment. You know, just see what happens. And a lot of times, Larry has things on his mind already. So all I have to do is bring up a name or a question and He'll go on for 10 minutes, and he knows his shit. So, if you're a fan of Larry Woods, Rob Works, and their electrical, you know, goings on, because that's just me talking to two guys, but they know what they're talking about. <laughs> me, I got the idea. Around the edges a little bit, I think. Because Larry wants to make a coil. And... The idea that Larry has that's different than the present-day coil is Larry's coil will not produce waste. And according to Larry, it's all in how the wrap of the wire is applied to the coil. Now, I don't know. It sounds like uh, my wife would have a good understanding of a concept like that because she crochets, she sews, and she's always, you know, making stuff. So she's kind of uh, hands-on, artsy. And that wrapping the coil with a wire a certain way, that is that logic must it must hit certain people a certain way. Beside me. I mean, I see it because uh, I think of the way art can be applied. Some people have uh, technique art. You use props and you spray this color and, this, and it, it forms a picture as long as you go with the recipe. But those people can't look at a, a picture of Mickey Mouse and copy it. That's a whole nother kind of art talent. That it's just weird. It was uh, <laughs> it was a, a fun thing to have through life, and I, now I can apply when I don't understand things like Larry and, and his coil. I compared it to something in art for it to make sense to me. Over the years of listening, you know, paying attention to what the, the electronic people have had to say, I've come up with, you know, my own theories and my own ideas. And then all i got to do to see if that's what they think is listen to them talk about it. And it works for me. And I think what Larry was planning to do on Thursday was have a chat with Rob about how to make the most efficiency out of the system that you have today. And if I'm wrong, I hope that's what they talk about. Because, uh, well, especially now with this coronavirus scare, we are all going to be sitting home, you know, munching up the electricity because, well, we won't be at work. Hmm. See, and it's things like this that makes that conspiracy theory part of my brain just start twitching. You know, how much how much pushing around can you do to a public when they all think that they're going to die from a, a virus? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I, for one, am not too damn worried, but talking about it because I guess it's, it's on it. Yeah, it's on all the channels. Everybody's got it going on. Mm. 200 countries have been infected by this here. 
Yeah, well, you know, those same countries have people starving to death in them. <laughs> what happened to malaria? I thought, wait, wait a minute. Measles, wait a minute. Did they... I am? Oh, hey, Rob. I don't mean to be correct. <laughs> it was an accident. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the electric... Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that it's just a perfect way to enslave people in a way they'll they'll be looked at badly if they resist this. If you resist illness, well, then you look like you're hiding that you're ill. That's the way the design of this whole idea has been you know, bred into us. Look at the movies, man. <laughs> Twelve monkeys! Well, all we need is a time machine and Bruce Willis. And I'm telling you, I've got this thing fucking whipped. You know? Because I can't remember the last time terrorists took over a high-rise and held people hostage and all this crap that they do in the movies. But they do it in the movies. Well, except for that one time when... Uh, Charles Bronson made a movie about breaking out a guy in prison. He's in a Mexican prison, and they stole a helicopter, and they broke him out of prison. And the very next day in the newspaper, somebody did just do that. After the movie was aired, somebody went and broke somebody out of prison with a helicopter. <laughs> so, does art imitate life? Does life imitate art? Does it matter? <laughs> I think we're all getting screwed. But it's not the popular belief. Yeah. Ah, they're talking about sports and such on the reallibertymedia.com. I'm telling you, if you if you like chat rooms, chat rooms are a taste. Because man, you can you can talk about some wacky shit in the chat room if you want to. <laughs> we do it all the time. Have a little fun. But if you don't, that's what the radio is for. And I would recommend, especially to duh out there in Radio Land, get a show. Do do this. It's not that hard. It's a little weird talking to myself. That's the and then when I smoke, I find it a little harder to stay on topic. But eh, so fucking what? I've seen more shit on television that I paid for. <laughs> This, at least this is part of a prepaid package that, you know, you're not getting added to anything. You know. Ah! We're going to get stuck with the flash tax. Help, help. Oh, no. The Grimner tax. <laughs> what do you think, Grim? Are you open to the Grimner tax and we can balance your fucking budget with the fiat currency we collect from the slaves? Except the slaves ain't going to be working very much longer. I don't really get this. I mean, it doesn't benefit, in the long run, it doesn't benefit anybody. Except for the electronic currency people and the wealthy that have, you know, plenty of help to do their bidding. The guy that's on his own, he's going to be fucked in a sort of a way, I think. You know, because uh, as I often comment, I've got the luxury of a partner. And if I didn't have a partner and I was alone, <clears throat> my whole attitude toward this whole thing might be completely different. But, see, I don't know. I'm only aware of what I'm doing. I can only imagine all that other horrible shit. <sighs> and I try not to, but it's in my face all day. Ooh. Everybody's going to croak. Well, we're going to get this. Oh, we're going to get that. Man, what happened to the meteor? Jeez. It's even taken the meteor off Grimm's mind. Haven't seen him go meteor for a while. And out of, a, out of a complete joke, by the way, I figured my personal uh, support for a political opponent in the upcoming presidential spinoff makes about as much difference this time as it did last time when I didn't vote. So this time, not only am I going to vote 
I'm going to vote for Joe Biden if Joe Biden runs with Jesus. And that's my, you know, my wish for 2020 is I want Joe Biden to run with Jesus so that I can have a reason to become a voter at last. And if that doesn't happen, well, I'm not voting. So, hmm, that's what I think. <laughs> I forgot all about interest. Wait, what? Oh, okay. So, see, Grim Grim likes to play the currency fiat game, and I don't have a problem with people. Cirque does. Fuck, that's the whole point. Is some people do that shit, and they're good at it. What I'm good at has fuck all to do with money. Crying out loud. Oof, I'm not a good money guy, cause I like to spend money. I don't, I think that's what money's for. But we're not. We don't have any money. We have debt. Period. And you can call it money if you like all day and all night. It makes everybody's dick hard, but well, when the electricity goes down, we'll see how far your money goes. <laughs> hey, Kate, I give the Kate the big in a perfect world salute for washing hands. Uh and all this washing your hands, I I was never big on handshakes in the first fucking place, but it never had anything to do with whether your hands were dirty or not. You got all kinds of shit growing on you all the fucking time. Doesn't matter. You're covered from head to toe in bacteria. Some of this shit keeps you alive. We got shit growing on us that kills other life forms. <laughs> but that's we'll save that for another show. <laughs> Jesus Martinez. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We're not taking it now. I'm going to go with, I want the Jesus guy, the real dude, the dude, not not the gardener. <laughs> but that's how seriously, I seriously do not believe that any of this crap is really true. I mean, we get told it, and we see it and all that, but eh, please. If it dictates your life, then you're going to be hiding underneath a rock. Worried about every fucking thing. Ah, save me. Save you from who? <laughs> Live someplace where it's not so crowded. And even I had some of the most fun in my life was had in places that were crowded. New York, Miami, L.A., London, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All the places that I, I had the luck of getting to uh, go visit or pass through. Passed through places and went, hey, I think I'll stay here for a while. And uh, other folk didn't do that. They had plans and strategies. You know? They knew what they were going to do with their life. And I don't really think I <laughs> gave it a lot of thought until I was like 50. Now I now I, I got plans and all that shit. But damn, until I was 50, it was all about what was over the next hill. And then something happened, you know. Uh, I think they call it, the, tip, the typical mind would call it maturity. I think it's just circumstances. You know? Sometimes uh, life takes a turn and puts you in a position that you can choose to stay or leave. And sometimes uh, the worst of the two things to face was I'd pick the harder one to deal with instead of taking the easy way out. And as a result of all that, now I'm I'm a, I'm being terrorized by the coronavirus in the privy of my own you know living room with my wife in Denmark. And <laughs> I don't know that this place hasn't been so bad so far. And if the government here is going to use it as a way to, to keep the you know, foreigners out. Well, I'm a foreigner in already. So that's, you know, that's just one other way to look at it. Population control. <laughs> you know, get the white collar people. Give them a break from all this drudgery. And we'll just make the working class keep going to work. And that's probably closer to the truth of it all than what we're being told. Not that they didn't figure out a way to get 
get weak old you know older folks like myself in weak position physically they figured out a way to get us terminally ill with no cure and the beauty of that i mean that's the way it's written they won't touch the dead bodies well uh, okay wait a minute i worked in a morgue for a period of time doing computer work during the daytime but there was dead bodies all over that bot, the building. They had corpses there. So I just don't see those type of people behaving in that fashion over what killed the body. So there's, as usual, I think there's more than we're being told. Hmm, could be. Or, as usual, I'm completely wrong and everything we're being... Yeah, told by CDC and you know the governments it's all true and I'm off my rocker out of my freaking mind because I I don't think worrying about it will change the outcome so I spend more time paying attention to the details of me you know I guess that selfish moment did hit I don't feel bad so hmm. A runny nose is not going to end my life. Well, other people are in weaker positions physically. I've got other illnesses. So to them, I probably sound cocky and you know, uh, self-assured. But that's me. You know, that's, what, that's how I got where I got to the point I'm at now. It's doubting things, well, that makes them what you think they are. So what's the opposite of that? You know, you believe it or you don't believe it. And in my reality, not your reality, folks out there in Radio Land, on the reallibertymedia.com chat right now, you may disagree with that, but that's the point of that comment. Is we all choose for ourselves. You know? And then there's different levels of belief, too. Some people are religious and you have all these other outside ideas that you may not carry. I know I don't carry them, but I've seen other people who have carried them. Oh, they're going to die. Oh, it's God's will. What? Okay. And then the person doesn't die. Well, it's that was God's will too. What? Okay. So I can't think in those kind of terms, but some of these people in the world around us, rely on religious foundation for belief systems about life and death. And I think when you uh, read about stuff on the Internet, that input is designed to hit you in a certain way depending on how your belief system works. Because I'm seeing the same exact crap on the Internet everybody else is. And I don't know. I'm not scared yet. But I got a little rasp in my voice. Oh, I probably got the bug. But mm, mind over matter tells me I'm not feeling that bad at all. So mm, we're going to let that one go. And I'm going to close this out on In a Perfect World. And remind you guys, Larry Woods and Rob are going to join me Thursday on at the same time. Uh, it'll be 2 o'clock on the East Coast because the, the present time change thing is doing its thing all over me and Grim. But Grim worked it out. Appreciate it, Grim. And then uh, if you want to uh, check out the reallibertymedia.com page, there's a schedule on it. And everybody that is doing radio, and find out what time they're doing it. Find your favorite weirdos on the radio for your listening perusal. And uh, outside of that, I don't really got much more. Thanks a lot, Grim. It was fun to rant and rave about absolutely fucking nothing uh, on In a Perfect World. And um, I just do better when I have somebody to chat with. But thanks to everybody that hang, hung in there with me tonight and put up with the uh, In a Perfect World podcast. So with that, we're going to say Roger Wilco over out.